Hello. Good evening. Hi everyone, this is Nakshatra from the Sportsman's Club. Hi. Hello. And we have Ankit over here. Ankit, can you tell us about yourself? You are a certified trainer. You are a performance enhancement expert. Can you tell us more about yourself and your work? Okay. So Arvind Yadav is here. Hello. Uh, so good evening, everyone. So my name is Ankit. I am a strength and conditioning trainer. I have been certified from ACA. Apart from that, I have done my ACSM as a personal trainer, uh, and I have been working with athletes since the last four, four to five years. I have worked with national level boxers, squash players, tennis players, uh, lots of other combat sports like MMA, Jiu Jitsu. So. i'm just happy to be here so my main goal is to help athletes achieve their goal in physic in their physical preparation so my okay. goal is to make you stronger faster more explosive and reduce your chances of getting injured so that's my primary purpose so i'm here to help you and to answer your questions yeah okay so our topic of discussion is strength and condition Yeah. So since you were in this industry for quite some time, you are working with athletes and uh, you know people. So yes. what do you think in India? Like, what's the scene with respect to awareness related to this thing about strength and conditioning? Does every athlete okay. know it's important to keep yourself strong? Okay, so uh, I feel like in India the canvas is like uh, it's very different. It's a very different situation because you know there is rural areas and there are urban there are semi urban areas so it's different everywhere but in the cities i feel uh, it's catching up you know uh, places like delhi chennai mumbai i think strength and conditioning is catching up but at the same time i feel uh, um, there is too much emphasis on fitness in some areas especially in some sports you know more than what is required because fitness has become commercialized okay i see 8 years 9 years 10 year old kids doing fitness 3 to 4 times a week which is actually not required okay kids specializing early in sports and i, I see like 6 7 year old kids having a personal trainer so that's not really uh, it, it doesn't really add value and it doesn't help the kids so i feel it's a very different situation but at the same time you know when we go to the rural areas where there is a lot of raw talent there uh, sometimes the elder kids they are prepared they were prepared to uh, get under structured strength and conditioning but there is a lack of expert expertise over there so i feel you know there is a lot of attention that needs to be paid but at the same time the good part is i see corporate uh, lots of corporate giants coming in and starting their we have seen reliance we have seen jsw so i have been to jsw center at bellari karnataka so it's a very good place so they have kids coming from all over india and they you know uh, they do their uh, grassroot uh, training program where they get younger kids and you know they get them there they take care of their education they take care of their e to z expenses and develop and make them into a better uh, help them become the best sportsmen they can be so there are good things happening so i'm very excited about uh, the coming times especially now the league, league system is here so like 15 yeah. 20 years before we wouldn't imagine kabaddi players being you know uh, at this stage where you know there are uh, millions like people are teams are spending millions people. yeah over a player so it's a very exciting time for indian sports and i think this is going to continue so yeah. uh, uh, i personally feel like sports like boxing badminton badminton is already huge i feel boxing is going to be the next uh, and i i would love to it bit uh, it to be the next big thing so really excited okay now since you mentioned about kids getting uh, like you know specializing in one sport very early yeah yeah do you think uh, there are sometimes a kid is very good at something and their parents are like beta theko yahi karna chahiye hmm but you know, later they are just junior stars and they just leave the sport lose interest later yeah so what do you think is the right time for a, a student to decide Hmm. that i have to play this sport or i am good at so i don't feel that there is a right time but uh, like sports specialization you know 9 out of 10 times it's not going to work, go really well you know 
we are not going to have a sachin tendulkar or a virat kohli or a sunil chhetri you know popping up every other uh, like every every parent think that their kid like if he performs well every parent think that their kid is going to be the next ipl star or the next isl star but you know that is not the case uh when it's come to sports specialization i feel parents should you know ease back you know and let the um, process take its time i feel like maybe the kid when the kid is like 13 14 that is the time when you know the kid realizes that he needs to get really serious or the coaches taking the coaches feedback taking the trainers feedback you know it should take its time but uh, at the same time i would like to point out that there are certain sports which require only specialization sports like uh, swimming okay gymnastics these are the sports that require early specialization because of the nature of the sport so there is a place for early specialization but it comes at a cost so you know spe- specialization is all not that bad as uh, you know so if a kid he's really inclined to badminton what their parents can do is you know periodize it maybe you know for uh, two or three months in a year he takes a break from badminton and he goes to some maybe he goes for swimming he does some other uh, maybe a combat sport maybe uh, you know a racket uh, a different kind of racket sport so he can you know unwind and uh, get that so so the next time when he comes back to badminton he has that hunger he is not doing it for his parents he is doing it for himself so if you uh, so for any one of you who is curious about this they can actually google about long term athletic development plan so it's a it's a model of how uh, a kid should be approaching his physical training and you know for lo- lifelong participation not just to make him the best athlete but so that he himself is motivated and he gets the best uh, the most benefit out of sports so you should you all should google about long term athletic development plan model so you will get a better picture about it so this is not like i, I don't feel like we we'll, we should be uh, we'll be able to cover so basically uh, in short it's a model where you know uh, so there are five stages in the model so first is the learning uh, fundamental stage okay a kid grows up he is 5 6 that is a time he focuses on fundamental he focuses on you know jumping he focuses on running he focuses on hopping he focuses on throwing with his right hand focuses on throwing with his left hand okay yeah striking coordination skills so that is a fundamental stage then is learn to train okay so at this stage you start uh, giving exposure to the kids to little complex activities you know maybe jumping over a hurdle yeah obstacle courses kids love obstacle courses so instead of you know introducing them to fitness drills you should introduce them uh, them to different kind of games okay so through which they get the benefit of the kids should get the benefit of fitness through these kind of games a younger kid uh, in like 5 6 7 8 9 10 years old they should get the benefit of fitness through all these things okay a fit, uh, and if at all you want the kid to be a part of a fitness program i think one or two times a week is more than enough uh, anything about that it doesn't make sense because eventually he is going to burn out because of school and all the other things it just just doesn't go well so you know uh, maybe here also we must be having a lot of athletes uh, who who would have seen similar scenarios in uh, lots of academies where kids are forced to practice for 2 hours 3 hours uh, uh, maybe one hour fitness so it doesn't really go well in the long term so there are the different stages learn to train then there is train to train then finally there is if you make it to the elite level then there is train to win okay after train to win then there is uh, uh lifetime dedication to sport basically even if you leave the sports you are going to stay active in that sport and enjoy the fitness aspect the mental benefits so mental benefits something that is highly underrated i feel Uh, parents don't understand that you know if a, if their kid is a uh, part of a sports program or a fitness program it's not just about you know making it to a certain level or certain ranking it's also about fun fun is the thing why kids join fitness so that is the crucial aspect so i feel that is a highly underrated yeah so um i suppose there's a person who knows nothing about sports. maybe a teenager yeah. someone who is 12 13 years of age and mm. he just likes a game 
how would you explain to him why is it important for your body to be strong enough so that you last in the game okay so uh, for a 12 years old he just enjoys the games he doesn't what really you have has big ambitions and he just wants to have uh, he's in it for the fun i won't mind him not doing fitness okay so there will come a time when he will eventually gra- uh, gravitate toward that instead what i would do is i would incorporate basic fitness aspects as a part of the sports practice maybe in the warm up maybe after the sports session maybe some light strengthening activities some posture related activities some games so you don't really need to so if i'm working on a for a kids if i'm working with a kid on a fitness aspect okay i don't really need to tell him that you know this is the importance and this is the reason because they are doing it for the fun they are not doing it for some scientific this thing okay benefit they are doing it for fun so end of the day fun is the name of the game so for them just introduce some fun activity maybe uh some crawling some hopping related fitness based games so they are going to enjoy it and they are going to get the benefit out of it without you know us forcing them or we we really don't need to explain them about all these things that is what i do with kids because i have my program at bombay gym and lots of other places okay i with athletics with racket sports athlete you for kids you don't really need to tell them about all these things you know because they are not uh, they didn't take up the sport for a certain fame or ranking or anything they did it for fun so let's keep it fun that's all i can and say what what would you say to a you know a young athlete who is in his team and who wants to make it big mm-hmm. and he doesn't know anything about the importance of keeping yourself fit he just he's just playing and he's you know unaware of, about this topic entirely yeah how would you explain that ye bahut important hai okay so for a teenage kid who aspires to be a full time athlete or uh, he's already at a decent level and want to further his career if you are in it for the long term you need to be fit okay so if if you reach a certain level at the national or or international or whatever it's a good thing you you know you made it without a structured fitness program that's a very good thing okay because your base is that much higher because you made it without fitness then the chances of you making it with fitness is much higher okay right. so if i'm if i become a national champion without any uh, fitness uh, regime okay so if i mm, if i have a trainer if i have good recovery the chances are i am uh, i will be able to make it much higher okay because uh, maybe the talent the dedication and that part uh, is that much more uh, from the athlete side so that's a good thing but if you want to if you want uh, if you are in it for the long term you need to take your strength and conditioning your fitness seriously because in things like injuries especially during growth spurts okay so things like injury can actually put you 2 3 years back you know so you need to take your strength and conditioning seriously if you want to compete against athletes who are much better than you okay because if you are not doing something somebody else is getting better if you are not getting better they are getting better just to beat you okay so nobody is going to uh, just say that you know uh, you can't say that okay i uh, i achieve this without fitness so i can achieve much more without it okay so there is a reason That's like nice. good yeah there is a reason good level athletes have uh, train with a good strength and conditioning coach or a good sports coach who has a good background in fitness so it is important and if it is not important now you will realize it later but you know so yes. there is no backing away from it so one way or the other you are going to uh, you will find it now or you will find it later that fitness is important so it's up to you if you are in it if you are playing the long game you better be dedicated to your fitness now uh, how uh, how important is sport specific fitness like suppose there's a person mm-hmm. who who a player and yeah. is coach that you should be fitter so join the gym or you know just be fitter and he doesn't know how to guide that person okay how to, and what i've seen this athletes really playing professionally go to the gym listen to what the trainer is saying whether it is good for him or not and just blindly follow it mm-hmm. they don't know that different sports demand different things from your body yeah and you need to be differently prepared for different things 
so why is food specific fitness so important so uh, okay so i will get to the root of this okay so you are 19 right yeah yeah 19 year old badminton player when did you start badminton i started when i was 14 13 or 14 okay so 13 14 fine so uh, you your requirement for fitness when you were 14 okay and your requirement for fitness now is very different okay so what i'm saying is not everybody requires sport specific fitness and you know uh, i think it's a like hyped up commercial term sport specific fitness is a hyped up commercial terms in most cases okay very few uh, you give me 10 athletes in mumbai out of that only one or two people really need sport specific fitness the rest of them like basic fitness basic movement literacy okay so what i'm saying is most sports okay we have tennis we have badminton we have squash we have football we have hockey okay we have basketball okay so if you see most of these sports they require basic skills okay you need to sprint you need to jump you need to lunge you need to strike okay you need good balance okay yeah. you need good coordination reaction anticipation skills right mm. so the thing is most sports okay so maybe field based sports or court based sports okay they have more similarities than differences okay, okay. so again i'm not comparing that to a you know swimming or a, a boxing maybe combat sports so combat sports also they have their similarities there are differences so if you are a 14 year old athlete or a 15 year old athlete or elder athlete just starting out you need to get your basic level of fitness right okay you need to be you need to sprint really well you need to jump well and land well also okay you need to hop you need to get all these basic uh all all these fundamental aspect in place before you think about you know you know uh, maybe doing some squash or a badminton drills or uh, some sport drills you know adding a band to your waist and go hit that shot okay do this do that add a band and maybe add a ankle weight around you ankle weight at your around your ankles so it doesn't really make sense so that is not sport specific fitness you are just doing mimicry it's mimicry fitness so if you are just mimic yeah, mimicking yeah just copying uh, their idol yeah you are just copying so how is it how does it require a scientific approach if the only thing you are doing is you are just adding resistance okay if uh, if there is a boxer you're just giving dumbbells in his hand and telling him to punch how is that sport specific fitness that is a mimicry session okay so it doesn't really make sense sport specific fitness in most cases okay lots of badminton player here they must be knowing they must be seeing these things on their badminton courts a lot right so where you are doing some sport specific fitness going around the cone and agility okay where you have to touch 10 cones touch that cone touch this cone come back uh, you know uh, back paddle okay so these things okay these things are not going to better after a certain point okay if i'm going giving you a specific drill in badminton you are running around and coming back in a certain period of time okay so maybe for a week two week three week four week that's all the benefit you are going to get out of it okay to get better you need to work on other aspects also so things like anticipation skills reaction skills okay so these things can be trained with uh, if he's a younger kid maybe with games okay maybe with uh, playing other sports okay so you will see a lot of squash players okay uh, you know training in badminton uh, boxing okay to work on their hand speed so in lot of badminton players had asked the question you know how can i increase my arm speed so you yeah. know you can maybe in your off season you can uh, place a little emphasis on boxing so i am saying boxing not just taking a racket in your hand and swinging it because you have already played badminton for years so if you are not able to get a benefit out of it your body is not, it is not your body is not being challenged maybe you know try some other sports you know which will emphasize those movements okay which will increase that uh, reactivity that reflexes okay so these things don't take up sports you know where don't wear the gloves and maybe start sparring or boxing with your friend okay where you can get to get hurt but you can 
you know work on pads and all these things so i don't think sport specific training is that important first get your foundation right get your foundation right reach a certain level at that given sport and then think about you know and sport specific training is not uh, most importantly it is not adding band and bungee cords around your waist and you know just running around so that's not really going to help you that you are just mimicking or just simulating it's a very little ben- there is a benefit to it but there is very little benefit to it so you know uh, you need to play so strength training has its part okay agility training has its part power training has its part okay speed strength has its part flexibility mobility everything has its place okay so if i have a uh, if i have a specific athlete in the off season i want to i want him to work on a lot of different qualities okay i want him to get very strong okay powerful fast okay generally not just specifically generally also okay i want to work uh, want him to work on his weak links okay maybe he has a weak wrist maybe he has a very wobbly or a very uh, you can say sprain prone ankle okay he can work on his ankle stability strengthen his ankles okay so his ankle doesn't twist so he can work on all these aspect you can't just you know uh, say sport specific uh, if your trainer if your trainer or your fitness program is all about mimicking sports cone drill ladder drills especially ladder drills it's not going yeah. to help you okay ladder ladder drill agility ladder what the, that is what they call them it doesn't make yeah. you agile why agility has a lot of aspects okay there is change of direction change of direction means you moving and changing your direction in different uh, uh you know different areas or uh, what we call basically movement okay then there is reaction okay how well how fast you react to a particular stimulus then there is anticipation skills okay yeah. how do you how do you read your opponent okay how do you read his body language his movements okay so right. there are all these aspects to it so you know agility ladder looking down and in and out in and out in and out you're going nowhere okay agility ladder if you are a 11 year old 12 year old for fun for coordination all these things are you know it's there is going to be a benefit to it but that's about it yeah. you're not going to get any benefit out of it as same thing for the cone drills okay you will 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 get much more benefit doing some other sports which is not related to your sports then you know just doing this blindly follow a good structured strength training program get stronger don't train like a power lifter okay keep your strength training uh, session short work on your overall body strength okay work on your ignored muscles okay so maybe your uh, swimmer okay they work on, work a lot on their lats because of the action their lats get trained a lot okay maybe if you are a uh, badminton player there is a lot of lunging on maybe one leg okay so exactly. train the other leg okay we don't want those asymmetries difference difference of strength between both the legs so cover all the aspects okay so you get overall stronger there is no imbalance imbalances can lead to injury so you need to understand that so right. work on your overall aspect become a better athlete okay the chances of you becoming better at that sport is much higher okay once once you reach at a certain level focus on the specifics first so if uh, um, you know if i have a kid who is like 5 6 year old he wants to become a doctor okay we are not going to give him all the doctor related study books when he is 6 and 7 okay he is going to study geography he is going to learn about nature and so many things you know maybe he is 16 17 18 that is when he is going to work on specifics so same thing applies for sports now since you mentioned about uh, improving on our weak skills aisa bahut baar hota hai ki there are two players jo same yeah. level pe khelte hain aur Haan. same type ka training karte hain par unki body different hai and wo uh, aisa baad mein rakh raha hai ki one is can you repeat your question can you repeat your question suppose there are two players playing at the same level yeah and they're training the exact same way hmm, they play the exact same way body I'm sorry their body their what body, their body is different their requirements are different hmm. and that's why maybe even with the same training they are performing differently one is hmm. performing better and one is not yeah. and there are people who just copy each other hmm. and that takes them nowhere okay so why is it not important to like why is it important to focus more on yourself 
why is it important the basically the training approach should be customized that is what you are saying customized for, yeah. for your personal need yeah. of course like every person okay so whether they have similar bo- uh, similar body types or they play are playing similar sports the need are most of the time you know and the weakness or the needs are going to be little different as you get older okay so for national maybe if you are preparing for national international tournaments you you need to focus a lot on your customization maybe you will get the benefit at state level you get the benefit by working just generally or working in a group okay group workout maybe a functional training that is the trend right now functional training or crossfit training you can get a benefit out of crossfit and all these things okay so but after that there there will come a point where you know these things are not going to work you need to work on yourself you need to get better if you want to uh maximize your potential in that sports if you are happy right. with what's happening you just need to you just want to enjoy sports that is fine but if you want to maximize you need to work on yourself so just look at what the best athletes are doing like you don't need to copy what they are doing but look at their approach they sleep well they uh, take a lot of pride in their nutrition okay they are training you know so all yeah. these things so like let the uh, just this look at their process you just need to uh, you know add those aspects okay you just don't focus on the result but look at what the elite athletes are doing how well how much importance they are placing on their fitness levels their nutrition their sleep so mm, that's all i can say okay so you know contrary to this is there any uh, specific body part or muscle that you think that is we get a lot of questions like this that is important for all athletes that is something like a base mm mm-hmm. body part okay har player ka ye to strong hona hi chahiye okay so see uh so in combat sports i can say you know uh something like uh, the combat sports athlete their pain threshold is very high okay you know they can endure a lot of pain so that is a common aspect so okay uh common thing that i would say is mo- more more than like physical i can say mental you know they are very resilient okay uh physically they are very creative good athletes they are very creative okay like when it comes so in sports okay basically what you are presented is problems a lots of problems okay and you come up with a lot of solutions you will see some athletes they come up with a lot of creative solutions to those problems okay even in very difficult situation okay they are come up they come up with some unique uh, you know uh things that it, like a lot of them times we see you know there are some things that go viral okay because of something unique a athlete does okay so i find like good athletes they are very creative they come up with their own uh problem solving right. uh, ideas so that is a unique thing and generally uh they are fast okay speed is something that you know uh, in most sports separates good athletes from uh people who are not able to make it that well speed and their their ability to repeat that for a period of time okay so badminton okay you sprint you hit the uh shuttle okay you come back you recover you keep repeating that for like 10 minutes 15 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes so that is a unique uh quality and mentally they are very resilient okay so they don't yeah so that is something that i see common i have like across all the sports not just one sport okay no so now we are living in india it's a developing country not everyone has money okay and there are a lot of people like you mentioned from villages from rural areas who want to make oh. it really big and they are ready to put all their they don't have the information the resources the education yeah but they have that hunger in them ki mujhe karna hai ha uh-huh. ha Uh, they are not at all aware about the fitness aspects you have put across right mm-hmm. and you know they don't have a mon- they don't have enough money to hire a personal trainer mm. or anything like that yeah yeah so, um how can an athlete in this situation tackle this situation okay so i feel how like uh, okay 
first thing is get your base right like you know you perform at the state level or national level juniors whatever i think there are organization which are as like in the last 5 6 years lots of organization that are working towards it you know you have jsw you have reliance okay right. you have uh, like there are lots of uh, i think association and organization who are working on it so yeah. and even in future there are going to be a lot of other organization who are, come, who are going to come up with a lot of solutions for these things so don't be discouraged okay just keep working just keep getting better at your sports i think because of the internet i feel this thing can be covered you know i strongly feel like you know because of uh, youtube and all these things there are there is information which is helpful for sportsmen when it comes to physical training and other things so i have like one there is one guy arun okay he's from aurangabad okay so you know uh, so he a lot of times he connects with me he sees a lot of stuff on youtube he, and he has he, like i think he has a medal in state and he has performed decently at the national level so there are a lot of athletes so i read, uh, so quite some time back i read a article on you know how one of the athlete learned uh, this thing javelin javelin from youtube and then he you know went to the olympics and he performed well so you know that's, that's the reason amazing. i'm saying this is yeah it's pretty amazing so the reason i'm saying this is don't give up so there are a lot of solution that are going to come up in future so just keep working that's all <laughs> i know it's uh, like it's harder uh, than what i'm saying because i'm living in the comfort of my home and in yeah. mumbai so it's easier but uh, like be optimistic so it's a tough time yeah right so um is this the reason like uh, resources are not easily available except in cities to athletes is this the reason as because indian athletes are not performing as well as international athletes in developed uh, countries like say canada denmark um uh, things are easily accessible they know more things it's near so do you think this is a major reason that india is performing that much as compared um, to- i think we are doing a lot better that than what we were doing before but yeah. you know there is a side to it where you know you say that uh, we don't have enough this and that but you no know, then there is other thing to we have enough talent for all the sports um, there is a lot of things that needs to be because there are countries who are uh, not very developed but they are performing well so it depends on the culture there is no physical literacy culture in india so there are a lot of thing that needs to be taken care of at the grassroots level okay so uh, like when it comes to jo- so i like from what i read and heard lot of uh, sportsmen got sacked okay because of because they were playing cricket and they had a job in a they had a secure job in some companies okay because of this covid times because of the cost cutting so that uh, they lost their jobs so this happened in a lot of a lot of uh, areas but you know there is a lot of things to it i think it's a like this plat like there should be a different instagram live session just to cover this aspect you know yeah. so making a blanket statement wouldn't be right so it's a very complex complex problem <laughs> yeah so you think that's the reason so okay now suppose there is an athlete who has the yeah. money okay yeah. would you advise him to go abroad and train okay so there is a athlete who has money okay and you know he is ready to like he has the resources he is ready Haan. to shell in much of money kya aap usko bolenge ki tu bahar ja wahan pe tera training karte uh depends on the sport so this culture is very common in tennis okay yeah. especially in like delhi chennai so the rich parents have same thing you'll see in south bombay okay, okay. sorry i'm saying this <laughs> you are from south bombay but you will see a lot of south bombay parents you know 8 9 10 year old kid performs well this they, they send them to morato glue in france spend 7 lakhs 8 lakh rupees for a month or two and they come back so that's not if you are not good it's not going to help help you you know it's just like a sports that's called sports tourism okay if you're doing well if you're doing well you're serious these things may help you okay in fact you know uh, 
all these good organization who are doing good work in sports you know they in fact uh, last like couple of months back jays uh, before the quarantine jsw invited uh, like boxers from abroad to train with them their boxers okay so there is a lot of exchange of skills so a lot of good things are happening but if you feel like your know, parents has a lot of mo- have a lot of money and that's going to help i think in most sports it's not going to help so you see this commonly in squash and tennis but there is a bad news like you will get good to a certain level but after that the ship is going to sink so all the best if you are if that is your approach to it like if that is anyone's approach to it is like most of them most of us don't have, most of the athletes are not going to have that much money but if you have it all the best the abroad ac- academies are going to make a lot of money from indian rich indian parents really yeah it's a it's a total business it's a business yes and lots of indian academies also like so i don't want to get into you know a rant but ab dhan dhanda hai kya kar sakte hai ha yeah i i live in the suburbs and my father yeah. and i have a lot of friends from south bombay and you know into different sports and yeah. they're like aur main to bahar ja ke aaya par mera to kuch fayda hi nahi so it's ultimately huh. on you right yeah of course yeah, like uh, uh you are right like you know uh, not everybody is going to get a benefit of it so i will tell you one just a second ha huh. so I, i will tell you one thing so there were kids from south bombay that i know who went there okay spent or spent a lot of money and got injured why because they were not ready to endure that much training okay they are training here for two to two hours a day then they go to france or some european some us guys maybe american country and then they go there and train for five hours and they are not able to do it for over a week they get injured they get mentally exhausted so it doesn't really help you know it's a com- these are all commercial places if you are sending them to develop they are good at a certain level they themselves are driven and they want to push it okay yes. keep the current coach who is doing a good job in the loop okay through him you know or maybe consulting someone who is really good at his job before sending just don't blindly just because just because you see that academy on instagram or on youtube or on facebook yes. doing some fancy drills don't send your kid to abroad and spend money you know most of the like parents know that this this is going to be a waste of time waste of money and waste of precious training time or right. so a lot of times i see kids getting at least getting injured you know because they get overworked they are not they are under prepared they are under prepared for such kind of training so right. so we need to be very careful before you know taking such a move okay so um, let's get to the questions our audience needs questions yeah and, yes uh, Well, there are a lot of questions from badminton so let's we can come yeah yeah well. yeah ah. so one thing you want to talk about how to improve arm strength okay uh, badminton player right yeah so any details about her uh, like age or experience or anything she is a teenager that's what okay. we could get to. okay she is a teenager good okay so uh, arm strength right arm speed or arm strength arm strength arm strength okay so okay so this period is really uh, important for her to work on her overall body strength okay not just arm but overall body strength overall maybe upper body strength okay so if you are a teenager you don't you can't do a single pull up you can't do a proper push up so try to work on those aspects okay try to get stronger in pushing pulling exercises okay you can use a trx so uh push ups handstands so all these body weighted exercises are important if you are in your early teens get your body stronger with body weighted exercises okay right. lots of body weighted movements crawling movements these are all these ex- all these exercises are going to make your upper body strong another thing that you can do is add in medicine balls okay medicine balls are not just going to make your upper body strong but also reflexive so you want to be strong but at the same time you don't want to lose speed in badminton right you don't want to lose your arm speed so yeah. medicine ball body weighted st- on a, like get five pull ups get nice 15 20 push ups then think about maybe a little bit of 
adding a little bit of strength training like three two to three days of uh, strength tra- uh, fitness training for your upper and your lower body with added That's medicine it. balls medicine balls that can you know uh, that that is going to benefit you a lot i feel so okay. go slow build that strength okay your off season especially this period is a crucial one for you to maximize your uh, strength strength level overall strength level so right. take maximum benefit of this okay now next is from saurav how to improve my explosive explosive strength yeah he is a badminton player he is a badminton player okay saurav so were you able to get any details about him uh, yeah he is a teenager maybe in his late teens like maybe experienced player not much okay so saurabh if you already strong okay you have you can do 15 20 push ups you can do nice five pull ups okay you have body weighted strength you are good at your sports what you can do is you can start strength training you can start lifting weights okay for so focusing on basic movements like squats deadlifts your dumbbell pressing your pull up rowing so all these movements just to get your full body strength once you are done uh, along with that i would advise you to focus on a lot of jumping based exercises okay so what we call plyometrics okay so quicker quicker jumps are called plyometrics if you are doing it slow it's just a jump nothing else so hopping bounding exercises so these movements are going to make sure you are not just getting strong you are quick on your feet and medicine ball is going to make sure that your even your arm speed is in its place so lots of rot- rotational medicine ball throw overhead medicine ball throw maybe medicine ball punches so you can add these aspects two times a week medicine balls so with medicine balls with jumps you need to rest a lot so don't don't overdo these things medicine balls and jumps three times a week of strength two times of jumps jump based exercises and medicine ball exercises are going to help you a lot so work on these things once these things are there it is going to you know eventually translate to better uh, like more explosiveness at your sport at badminton so i'm sure this is going to help you at the same time make sure you are not uh, you are not overdoing cardio you are not overdoing endurance you are not overtraining you eat eat well you sleep well so that is where you know your body recovers and you get better so train hard recover harder so train smart not okay. just hard so, yeah so the next question is from parvati uh, she do is a badminton player she is around 13 to 16 years that's what i can guess from her. okay and uh, she is asking how to increase my wrist power and speed wrist power and speed okay so what you can do is uh, speed uh, uh, i don't like speed uh, i feel when it comes to speed what you train in badminton okay that's enough to you know help you with the speed aspect but for strength okay at your age you are a girl so girl find it very difficult when it comes to body weighted exercises like push ups and pull ups so you can start strength training okay so something like pull up where you are holding your body weight with both of your arms is going to challenge your wrist a lot okay so you know incorporate pull ups two to three times a week use assisted pull ups you can youtube about assisted band assisted pull ups okay yeah. youtube about inverted rows how to do inverted rows you can use these exercises to develop strong wrist okay so apart from that you know you can do grip based exercises okay so there is a uh, there are some equipments that can help you with your grip okay so your grip stronger grip you're going to get stronger arm your wrist okay so that's going to help you if you have kettlebell at your gym or your academy you can do bottoms up kettlebell carry take the kettlebell bottom up okay and just walk okay you can do farmer farmer carry take a heavy dumbbell hold in both the hands and maybe walk for like 30 seconds 60 seconds you can do this two to three times a week okay so this is going to help you get a stronger wrist but and make sure that you do some mobility and flexibility for your wrist so you don't lose the movement it shouldn't happen that your you get you just get strong and you lose flexibility so that that will cost you so work on the overall aspect with kettlebell you know so there is gaurang i'm 
Amdekar, who's like who's one of our uh, coaches. Okay, he's mm-hmm. a part of Athlete First, so he's expert in kettlebell. So even he's commenting for strong grip at kettlebell for strong grip. So that is going to help you. So you can uh, anybody who wants to get a stronger wrist, you can work with kettlebells, body weighted exercises first. Okay, mm-hmm. before doing anything specific or worrying about. Uh, specific badminton related or your sport related work so the next question is how to uh, improve your endurance and stamina now this is a, uh, his name is nihar he is i think 15 between 15 to 18 hmm. and uh, badminton player. badminton player nihar nihar right okay so he is 15 to 18 year old Okay, strength and uh, endurance, or only endurance. He said you mentioned stamina and endurance. Stamina, okay, stamina and endurance. So Niyar, what you can do is start working on your endurance right away. So this is a good time for you to because the sports a lot of places sports practices are off. So this is a time to you know train endurance two to three times a week. Okay, so create a good endurance base. Maybe use tempo runs. Okay. Use things like tempo runs first. Maybe you can create a eight-week cycle to build up your endurance. So first, maybe first for the first three to four weeks, work on just you know steady-state cardio or tempo runs or uh, MS. So you can Google about maximum aerobic speed or just YouTube about maximum aer- aerobic speed. You will get the information. So once for three four weeks, you build your general endurance and stamina. then that after that period you should focus a little bit on you know involving specific aspect okay like change of direction aspect you know doing some on court based endurance work so for 3 to 4 weeks work on general endurance and stamina and after that you can work on your uh, specific endurance aspect and if you uh, if you want to improve your muscle endurance if you feel your legs get tired your hands get tired so you can uh, start with strength training okay if if you are still there's a long way to go for your competition you can you know include things like battle ropes to get your arms muscular good endurance at your arms your shoulders so battle ropes can be used medicine balls for power so a lot, lot of things that can be included but you know it's like pretty basic so this is a very uh, like valuable time so you make sure that you start as early as possible don't take a time off if you are totally deconditioned start slow and slowly build it up okay don't go hard in the first week or second week slowly build it up a uh, increment of not more than 15% that's very important okay so if you are working out for like if you are training for 3 hours next week it shouldn't be like you know 6 uh, hours of intense training slowly build it up okay train hard train smart and recover properly have a good nutrition plan in place and progress slowly okay don't focus on turn off activities if for stamina two to three times a week more than enough for your sports so once you start with your sports you are going to get your stamina and endurance from the sport itself you don't have to train it separately then you can focus on strength power speed and all these aspects okay because you are going to get your endurance from your sports you know with the practice session last for one two three hours so that's the thing Okay, so uh, since you mentioned about this, there's Dharmesh. He's a taekwondo player, yeah. and uh, he stopped playing ten months ago, and he wants to get back in the game. So, okay, he's asking how long will it take to regain my stamina and it? so it's a very vague question. Okay, so ten month is a lot of period. Okay, first thing, okay, like mm, that's a lot of period. So he took a very big break. Okay, so his body must be. Co- Uh, totally uh, decondition so first thing that i would advise him is build up your endurance okay build up your endurance so you can actually last for the, uh, for long fitness sessions or your training sessions okay so if you don't have endurance to last for, uh, you know if you start your sports practice okay and if you can't make uh, make it to those technical drills for an hour or like 30 minutes okay you are going to have a really bad, bad time getting back to it so first work on your endurance okay get in shape get in decent shape if like if if you play in if your fi- uh, fighting weight is maybe 80 kg and you are 90 to 93 kg right now at least get get to 85 
so gain a decent level of fitness before you get back to your sports and uh, go hard so we have nihar here thanks a lot sir was it really okay <laughs> so build a base first okay work on the technical aspect of taekwondo get good technically do things slowly don't use explosive drills okay don't go for contact drills okay work on the technical aspects if you have been playing taekwondo for 6 7 years you will get the get the skills back maybe in like 3 4 5 months okay if you are playing it for 2 3 years you may take a longer time because of muscle memory so muscle memory for combat sports muscle memories my muscle memory matters a lot if the if that taekwondo player he has he has taken a 10 10 month break he need to build it up slowly focus on the technical aspect build a good endurance and stamina so you can actually last for the practice session okay get a basic level of fitness right then focus on specific fitness okay so it should be a built up of like 3 months 4 months 5 months okay don't go fast focus on getting your flow okay make sure so there are there is a high chances of injury if you have taken a 10 10 month break and you go really hard the chances of injury is really high so go slow build it up okay don't go for contact sparring okay that's going to uh, that may put may put you in trouble so that's all the best like and uh, for all the at least avoid such big breaks okay train train in one form or the other okay maybe focus on physical even if, like uh, a lot of sports they can use shadowing and all these aspects just to keep the technical as- aspect going but avoid such big breaks okay and those who train really hard what i would advise them is uh, take a deload week after every 5 or 6 weeks okay if you train hard for 5 weeks the 6th week will be deload deload means either you drop the intensity or you drop the volume maybe if you are training for 6 hours train for 4 or 5 hours okay or drop the intensity of the drills or the fitness session or your sports session drop the intensity so what happens is mentally and physically you are fresher when you come back okay so deload is very important for all the athletes to remain injury free and especially in such a period where you have been away from your sports build it up slowly see uh, your uh, if you are in the long game is going to help you a lot okay especially when it comes to injury and your long term goal don't go hard as soon as you know sports practices begin competitions begin don't go hard play the long game yeah so we have bhushan here how to deal with wrist pain please give some details about your wrist pain bushan hi bushan so okay. next question yeah tell me answers uh this is from two people one is sanvik and one has a username being sprinter so i'm hmm. assuming he is sprinter uh, yeah how to increase hamstring strength hamstring strength for sprinter very interesting nice question so uh yeah Uh, sprinters suffer a lot of hamstring strains okay and they rely a lot on hamstring strength so that is understood so uh, if you are 200 meter or 100 meter sprinter okay so work a lot on your eccentric strength of the hamstrings so when i say eccentric strength what i mean is ability to absorb force okay so go on youtube search about nordic curls search about eccentric hamstring exercises okay not just deadlifting deadlifting is not going to help you okay the force that your l- lower body generates during sprinting is much higher than the force you generate when you lift 300 400 kg okay because you are hitting the uh, good level sprinter hits the ground really hard okay harder than what you need for uh, lifting weights so don't yeah. just focus on lifting weights lifting weights may help you if you are state or a basic level athlete if you are national about that okay if you reach a certain level of strength after that strength just lifting weights is not going to help you okay work on your eccentric strength get your form right okay first work on your technical aspect get your sprinting form refined okay and once you go back to your sports right now slowly build it up okay maybe you can start with incline sprints okay so that is more friendly on your hamstrings so go with incline sprints at the same time train the uh, hamstrings in the gym okay train your glutes train your hamstrings okay there are a lot of so just google about eccentric strength okay how to get eccentric and isometrics okay 
so isometric strength so just google about these two things if you don't get anything there or or if you're confused you can always message me at athlete first performance or ankit tivrekar i have my instagram my personal instagram account or on athlete first up to you so okay this was very helpful and yeah. this was the last question so thank you for joining yeah. thanks for coming it was great to have you a lot of yeah. my own doubts were also here and i'm sure uh, the answers that you've given uh, it is very satisfying for all the athletes especially after you mentioned their name so yeah. it was a very knowledgeable session and just keep spreading all the knowledge it helps a lot and i hope we we can work together in some way in the future to help uh, sports yeah, so in- we have a mma fighter bala krishna so he's a international fighter and yeah. he recently started training with me so he's here so great to have a lot of brawl combat so we have a lot of people familiar faces okay, so this, um, yeah thank you everyone everyone for watching and uh, i think this okay. very educational for any athlete yeah so yeah. this session is spread as igtv on our page and tell us yours and also on your youtube channel yeah and uh, yeah thank you so thank much you, uh, you know all the best for your team you all are doing a really good job uh, are, uh, so i think you missed one of the question we have ashal mishra yeah about that's the, not fair uh, see he's here <laughs> he's here <laughs> just before the session and he's he's here he's asking why didn't you ask oh, my question <laughs> bowling drills for knee dominant swing i think you can answer that so can you ask the complete question he has a very big question i think so can you suggest bowling drills for knee dominant swinger and how uh-huh. many days how many days should i uh, train that area in a week okay so achal mishra i know him because he had uh, personally messaged me so he is a knee dominant bowler he relies a lot on muscle strength okay so what's a knee dominant bowler for people who are listening okay so when you land on your back foot bowling foot your knee bends a lot so you are a knee dominant bowler you rely a lot on muscle muscular strength so uh, for achal i can't uh, really uh, so you really land heavy on your back foot so what i would recommend you is do a lot of assisted sprints what are assisted sprints where you are actually uh, tie, tying the bungee on the front side and somebody is actually assisting you while you are running so do a lot of assisted bowling you can youtube about assisted bowling so you get a little faster on your back foot another thing that i would recommend you is uh, work on your leg stiffness stiffness means uh, so when you land on the back foot your heel collapses and your heel touches the ground so we don't want that to happen so you need to work a lot on plyometric based exercises lot of jumping based exercises and before you start bowling pre tension your ankles pre tensioning means uh, doing a lot of jumping based exercises where there is a lot of reactivity and reflexiveness at your ankle joint so when you land on the back foot your foot doesn't crumble so two takeaways from for you so first thing is assisted running or assisted bowling and pre, uh, working on plyometrics okay so work on these two things you will get Uh, better at it so that's all i can say i can't give you specific technical drills because i don't really know about you in depth so sorry for that okay so that's your that's your answer so oh, that's fair <laughs> so all of them are answered you don't like cricket I, i guess you don't like cricket so you just missed this <laughs> no i just it just <laughs> lot of sportsmen have a grudge for cricket grudge against cricket <laughs> no, 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 fair limelight Okay. okay. So, so that's it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And Welcome. We enjoyed it. It was a very great session. Thank you so much. Yeah. All the best. Okay. Bye. The best thank you for. Thank you everyone for joining in. Okay. Take care. Bye.